And, and that was you know, FOB USA. And so you had a one-day riot in Italy over the price of Durham. And that's all they did. They, they protested one day and then said, okay, great, you know, we'll pay record high freight prices and, and record high Durham and we're still going to consume. Still going to consume. So again, it's that understanding of the food cost. What is that true component in the actual good that's being consumed? Very, very important. Um, talk about corrections. The market had a massive correction in March. Good lesson, right? Um, Macquarie, we were, we were very fortunate in terms of, of some of our trading positions um, to have taken that lesson we learned in March in terms of a correction, in terms of overshooting, both to the top side and the downside, hence the massive volatility that we have seen, we are seeing, and will continue to see for the foreseeable future. Okay, we overshoot to the top side, we overshoot to the downside, but that does bring opportunity. Opportunity. Um, Western diets, we've talked a lot about this, okay? We've seen a lot of data, and what I'm gonna try to do is not, you know, rehammer on these numbers because, you know, this, this is your guys' business. You know these numbers, you know the China story. Um, maybe try to present it in a different light, but the, the Western diet is very real. There are more and more people wanting to eat protein, okay? Um, so again, uh, how do you ration that demand if you ever have to? How do you say, hey, no more pork for you, go back to and eat rice? That will be a very difficult task that the market could eventually have to face. Particularly when you look at developed countries and what they're spending on food or what we spend on food. You know, it's a eating away from home, okay? The, the, the amount of disposable income Disposable income that can be spent if you went away from restaurants and went away from eating out and started cooking more at home. You know, that, that's a no, whole new level of money that can be spent for that finished product, i.e. cooked at home rather than restaurants. Again, a very key concept to remember that people talk about how much you spend, but again, it's a lot of it's away from home. Getting to inelastic food demand. Let's talk about that, okay? Again, the Durham example, hard red spring wheat, same example. Yes, you had a very steep correction, but you know what? It got up to $25, $26. You saw convergence happen, which, you know, that's the big buzzword in, in, in the press right now. We've moved away from food price inflation to, you know, the speculators and the CFTC hearings and, you know, this, this concept of convergence, which I'm more than happy to offer a few opinions on uh, later on. Um, and then, obviously, the investment interest. Okay? Now, some people call it hot money. Some people call it dumb money. Um, I have the luxury at Macquarie. I, ha I have a very unique role in that I get to, to touch pretty much everything um, around the world. By and large, um, I have commercial accounts, which includes producers and consumers. I have hedge funds that are my clients that I do specific trade structures for, and I also deal with private investment banks on, on different baskets, whether it's three to five years, um, but those are based in Europe, Latin America, um, and so forth. So I really get to see the range of, of how people think, what, what people are looking at, um, and, and it's really just a, a, a really great way to, to see the entire scope of what we're dealing with. Um, that money is here, that money is not going away, um, I think the last six weeks have been painfully brutal for some, painfully bl or uh, blissful for, for, for others. Um, but again, that money is not going away because this story is compelling. There are very sound and strong fundamentals that support the story, okay? And that's what these guys want, is that what is the story? Why would I want to be investing in this? So again, um, I think at, at the core of it, certainly the emerging markets, okay? It's no longer you know, a US and, and Europe type world. Again, you've, you've got to be aware of what's going on everywhere. And it's going to be the emerging economies and, and this Western diet shift and this, and this production um, boom and so on that are at the core of the future trends. So again, this is just a, a, a walk back in history really quick. Um, you know, these are, these are kind of the, 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 the reasons for where we are, the, the bullish phase, the structural change. You know, what's, what's occurred? We had, you know, the, the very, I, I joined the market in 96. That was kind of fun because that's when soybeans um, 
tried to, you know, we, we thought beans in the teens when I was sitting in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, beans got up there and, and then uh, it was pretty quiet and pretty boring um, until about 04, 05. Actually, you had the, the Black Sea wheat invasion in 03 or 02, 03. And then you had a, a kind of an exciting market in 04, 05. But what's so fascinating now is that in a day, we are trading a wider range, i.e. wheat had a $1.30 range in one session. We're trading wider ranges than we did all year long in some of these commodities. Great fun. I mean, it's, you know, someone uh, gave me a great analogy. They said, you know, in this market, there's not bears and bulls. What we have in this market now is one day you're a fire hydrant, and the next day you're a dog, okay? Because that's about what it is, you know? Zero hero, bankrupt, you know, millionaire. Hey, happy days, because that's what we're doing with. And that volatility, um, and, and Macquarie, we trade volatility, that, that's kind of the premise of, of our investment. Um, and, and you know, you gotta love a volatile market. So again, this is a medium long-term view. Um, yeah, we think the story is real. We think that, uh, you know, again, the world's never been more susceptible to a supply shock. I would, you know, argue easily that we will not be building surpluses anytime soon in wheat, corn, soy, etc. We're, we're not going to enter this burdensome phase. And whether it's from countries building food reserves, i.e. India, to other countries being very concerned about food price inflation, um, Argentina, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, um, I, I would, you know, you could certainly make the case that the EU is trying to um, pay back maybe their feed sector, given the high prices that they had to pay for Brazilian corn last year, by limiting the export licenses right now. On, on wheat. Hopefully that wasn't me. That's it. It's like I'm already over my time. Um, so in any event, uh, yeah, the, the capital crunch is, is very real. Cash is king. If you have cash, happy days. Because I would say this, in this volatile market, you are going to see consolidation. You are going to see acquisitions. It, it's, again, it's, it's a structural change in the marketplace. Um, all is not what it seems. People look at these record prices and they go, hey, we're going to plant every acre to everything because prices are so great. Well, I tell you what, input costs are very, very high. This is going to influence what is produced, especially if you do not have access to capital. Guess what country does not have access to capital? Brazil. I was just there, gosh, I guess four weeks ago, three weeks ago. I uh, was in Sao Paulo, went to Mato Grosso, went to Lucas do Rio Verde, it was, it was all over. Um, they've got, there's big problems down there. Big problems. I mean, 82% of the soy production in Mato Grosso is based on the barter system. Well, what happens if the barter system where, you know, your break even is say 45 bags, and a seed company or, or a multinational or, or, or will say, hey, we'll, we'll offer the financing and, and the inputs and that at 42 bags and suddenly your profit margin's three bags? Oh, no. You're not gonna expand acreage. And if the market thinks that Brazil's going to expand acreage just because soy's at 13 or $14, I would say no. It will not happen. Will not happen. And, and I'll talk about a few other things when it comes to soy um, when I address those individually. Again, going back on the theme, the world did not get here overnight. Haha, <laughs> behold the laser. Um, this is the 08, 09. Um, these were the numbers released in the uh, August WASD. This was the supply cushion in 07, 08. Probably the number that jumps out to me immediately is wheat. Okay? So essentially, you raised, you, you had a world record wheat crop, right? 650 million metric tons. I'm sure we'll find two to three before, you know, the end of May. So you increased world production, say 55 million tons in a year. In a year, that's amazing. But guess what? You only added 10 days of supply and your stocks, you raised.